so that was traversing issue. And the next question is the single source uh, sorted path problem. So um, shortest path, finding shortest path is a really recurring problem. There is really diverse uh, applications in finding shortest path. For example, the navigation, path finding, and the routing, um, computer uh, internet network, uh, that's another challenging issues in finding shortest path. And these days, social networks is another type of finding shortest, shortest path uh, problems, shortest path problems. So if this means that we know where we are, we know where we start, we know this source. And what we want to know is the how long to travel to our destination. And the source is where we start and destination is where we want to arrive. For example, if we have this graph structure, S is the starting place and D is the ending place. And to uh, arrive at D, we need to spend like 13 time and um, the path to achieve this 13 time, uh, 13 time units is this path. So we want to find out this and this as well. Actually, uh, in very early uh, weeks, we already dealt with the shortest path problem. Where is that? That was the week of the dynamic programming. So shortest path problem is very related to the um, dynamic problem, dynamic programming approach. So this particular problem, uh, shortest path finding problem is being solved digestra algorithm. And digestra algorithm utilizes this dynamic programming. So in dynamic programming, uh, to avoid the recurrence with overlapping sub-instances, we utilize the minimization table so that uh, we can grow our solution sets to, uh, to the, our target uh, solution. And this was one uh, that thing actually related to the shortest path finding problem. So production starts here and do, can you see that this problem as being graph structure problem? Actually now you might able to see. Here uh, the 2 is actually the edge weight 2, right? And um, this is being edge weight and this is being edge weight like this. 9 this is being edge weight and 3 this is being edge weight. 1, 5, five like this so finding shortest pass uh, on this uh, assembly line we already covered and we use the dynamic programming approach in the week um, I call it week five uh, uh, we dealt with this so uh, the digest trust algorithm so this is this was the one um, uh, who invented this algorithm and this is the Dijkstra and the here the V is the vertexes and W are the weights uh, set of weights on edges and S is the source vertex so input is the graph structure graph structure and the source vertex and this is the pseudocode, a mechanism, mechanism of, uh, the di of the digestra algorithm. In short, uh, it refers to this case. Uh, we start from this source uh, node somehow, and we want to arrive to the destination. And there is 20 time steps, time units pass. It's 20 time units pass. Somehow, in our memoization table, says that to reach to the vertex 3, it takes uh, 9 time steps. 
and from the vertex 3 to the destination, it takes 4 time units. Together, 13 time units. This is way faster than this 20 time units, and we might want to um, update the path from S to D, from this direct route to this alternate route. So we want to disconnect this, and we want to set up this route. So that is being represented like this. This update or uh, routine um, is represented in this um, if statement. Actually, to understand how the digestra algorithms work, the best way is to see how it works. So I gave you uh, a little bit of this slide set. So somehow I know it takes 9 to reach 3. And will I update the time 20 with the time 9 plus 4? Here the, we have the memoization table. Here, uh, so, I'm oh, sorry. Retrieving minimum distance from the list. So actually, this uh, solution set, this algorithm is very similar to the one that we already discussed in the uh, dynamic programming week. So let's see how it works. We start from the source here. And this is our given data structures. And from the current information, we have only uh, we only uh, there is no way to judge how long will it take to reach to a uh, destination D, as well as one and two and three as well. So this is our initial conditions. The graph structures are given. We know where we start, so the distance to to the starting node is zero. But the, to the other nodes, we have no idea how long will it take. From the source node, we have we can find the two edges. Uh, the one edge pointing at that uh, we can reach to the uh, vertex one with the time three. So actually, because the infinity is smaller than 0 plus 3, uh, bigger than 0 plus 3. So we update uh, this case. Similarly, infinity is bigger than um, 0 plus 20. So we update uh, this cell. So we have 0, 3, 20. At the current level of shortest pass, uh, time. The next is that um, we start from the uh, one with the shortest path. So um, three, uh, three here. The three is the shortest path to get to a certain node, right? So we pick one here. So from one. We know that there are three uh, edges starting from that part node one. And then here, um, two was uh, infinity before. So infinity is bigger than three plus five. The edge weight, edge weight plus uh, starting nodes. Time. So starting those time is 3, and here at the edge weight is 5, so 3 plus 5. It means that uh, to reach to 1, it takes 3, and to reach to 2, it only takes 3 plus 5, it means 8. So this being updated. Infinity is bigger than the 3 plus 6, so 9 is being updated. Here, 20 is still bigger than 3 plus 15. 
So this is 8, 18. 18 is smaller, 20 is bigger. So we update uh, this time as well. So S and 1 are being covered. Next set of the nodes, 2, it has the smallest uh, time. So we move to the 2. So actually, there is one possible way to get to here. So, so starting node, starting node, node time is a plus the edge weight is seven. So together, actually fifteen. Previously, this was eighteen, but. A plus 7 is smaller than 18, so this is 15. So we update uh, this node. And then S1 and 2 are all being covered. And then uh, the next smallest time unit, um, time to get to a certain node, is 3. So we move to this 3. From 3, we have one choice. Uh, getting to uh, D with time for and last is time for comparison 15 and it takes 9 to get to node 3 and it only takes 4 time units to get to uh, node, uh, node D so 9 plus 4 actually this is 13 and is smaller than 15 so we need to update it so after that um, we only have D left so we don't have to do any further iterations and after that the memoization table indicates to reach to the source node zero time and to reach to the first node uh, first node it takes three time units to reach to the two second um, uh, node 2 takes 8 time units. To reach to the node 3, it takes 9 time units. In least to reach to the node D, it takes 13 time units. So this is how the digester algorithm works. Here, the time complexity is, yeah, it's complicated. We are not going to prove this. Um, I think that in, in computer science, we might have to prove this, but in this department, we don't need that. However, uh, before we go further, we need to discuss this time complexity a little bit. Here, the, this is the size of the uh, edge numbers. So, the, so this number can vary. It can go. It can be a spark. It can be sparse, or it can be dense. If it is close to a uh, dense graph, if it is close to sparse graph. If it is a uh, dense graph, means that this um, the edge numbers are almost equal to the v squared. Means that if we just replace this v squared with this one, then the order is going to be order v squared log v. So we have quadratic term in front of the log term. What you often seen was n log n. However, this is way bigger because we are adding another const another um, linear term in front of that n log n so it's what it's the most expensive algorithm that we have seen throughout this course so it's more than quadratic time complexity and it's pretty expensive 